I'm so, so excited to welcome John Maloney. Uh, John is the, is the global head of sales and marketing for Bose Automotive. Uh, we know we know Bose Corporation, obviously, as a as a very uh, popular global brand, um, and we're so excited to have their their uh, you know chief commercial officer from the automotive division with us today. Um, so, John, I, I would love to jump in and uh, have you just give a little bit of background on yourself, uh, your career, uh, how you ended up at Bose, and what your path has been so far. Sure, great to uh, great to be here with everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Um, so I'm I'm really pleased to be joining you guys today, Colby. And you know, I think you can see uh, a little bit about me and my background um, at Bose and and other companies in the automotive industry and outside the auto industry. Came across uh, you know Scott Galloway via No Mercy No Malice turned into a, a fanboy after um, after attending uh, a few sprints and have become the the evangelist and sponsor within Bose Corporation for this type of uh, new learning. Thanks John that's great and and for those in the audience I was going to I was going to make a joke at the top of the call that we're doing a big Bose giveaway today. <laughs> Uh, you know, we're going to get you a fully equipped new BMW X3, fully, you know, fully automated with Bose sound. But I feel like that might be an overpromise, John. So uh, just, I, just, just a little bit, Colby. But you know, we're keeping <laughs> real today and, and informal. Maybe, maybe just uh, to, to, to take a step back to um, before we get into this, if you could just go back to that last slide real quick. You know, I, I, I thought about this a little bit and, and maybe, you know, something that's a little bit more unique about me as it relates to kind of my experience with Section 4 and Prof G is, you know, obviously I'm a, a corporate monkey at, at Bose and, and um, you know, I bring that perspective, but I'm also the chairman of Filter Grade, which is a small company mm -hmm. for um, uh, creative people to digital marketplace and I do some other advising uh, with small companies and startups so I feel like I can bring the lens uh, of this type of learning to corporations to small companies and to startups um, so that's that's uh, I'm excited to have a diverse audience uh, to to hopefully answer some questions uh, for and then you know, if people want to reach out, obviously they can hit me up on LinkedIn or contact me via you. Awesome. That's helpful context, John, too. I'm thinking about the folks in the room today and, you know, we have some attendees, I'm sure, from, from similar large corporates, notable brands such as Bose, but we also have a lot of startup entrepreneurs. We have a lot of founders, a lot of, you know, uh, early stage, mid-stage startups uh, on the call today and represented within our sprints, of course, as you know. Um, so that's that's great to to share your kind of the, the two the two worlds that you get to live in day to day. Pretty exciting. Absolutely. So back to Bose. Tell us a little bit about just Bose. We I think we all, uh, or at least I have a general sense for Bose Corporation. Um, I'm also a Massachusetts native, as as you are. Uh, so I am familiar with Bose uh, when I go down the Mass Pike. Yep. Uh, and. But I'd love to hear just a little bit more specifically about Bose Automotive and where that fits within the organization. Yeah, so Bose Automotive is is one of four divisions within Bose Corporation. So, you know, Bose is a private company founded by Dr. Bose uh, back it's about 60, uh, 58 years ago. So uh, it's been around for a while. Dr. Bose was first and foremost a student and then he became an educator at MIT, taught his entire life at MIT, world-renowned uh, instructor. You can look up uh, videos on YouTube about Dr. Bose, a really inspiring person. Uh, and then when he passed away, uh, he donated the shares uh, of the company to MIT. So we're held as a part of a special purpose trust. They don't get involved with our business, uh, but they do get some benefits um, uh, in terms of dividends. So as I mentioned, there's four divisions. There's the consumer division, which is, you know, headphones and, and home theater and, and speaker systems, uh, which is the largest part of the company. Automotive, which is where I'm from. Uh, we, we sell and, 
uh, factory installed audio systems, as you can see, and to different car companies ranging from Porsche and all the different brands in GM, Mazda, Nissan, Hyundai, Kia, et cetera. So we, we get to work with a lot of really global companies around the world. Uh, there's a professional division, which um, puts uh, speakers and stuff into buildings, concert halls, churches, airports, et cetera. And then we have a, a new startup business within the company that's centered around health and specifically hearing aids and sleeping assistance. About 8,000 people globally. And um, you know, I think that hopefully gives you a little context of Bose as a corporation and, and Bose Automotive. That's great. It's very helpful, John. Uh, a, a great description of the business, and you know, I certainly have some questions, uh, but you know, we don't have to. We don't have quite enough time for all of that. Um, but anyway, I'd, lo I'd love to transition into into section four. So thinking about you know, company of eight thousand globally, um, truly a global operation with these these multiple major uh, major divisions. Tell us uh, a little bit about why why Section Four Sprints seem to be a good fit for uh, for not only those within your team but uh, folks outside of your team. Actually, quite a few folks outside of your team. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it starts with with uh, it always starts with one employee, and I was fortunate. Uh, a colleague of mine, Dave Royf, who uh, works in our engineering organization a very progressive leader actually attended one of the very first sprints from, from Prof G. And so he was the one that kind of tipped me off. He's a pretty progressive guy and really clear thinker. And he said, Hey, this looks pretty cool. So uh, I signed up for one of the brand, um, the, one of the early brand sprints and, and just fell in love with the whole concept. You know, it, it, it's, um, we're trying to become, you know, more externally oriented. We want our employees to to look outside more than inside, and um, that's really what what triggered it. And this, uh, you know, the the learning model that uh, you guys have deployed allows us to scale this around the world. Um, and you know, maybe if I looked at our two audiences, kind of to the bottom two bullet points, you've got people that need to learn some foundational uh, skills and acquire those new skills. Um, and then you have people that maybe need to do some upscaling or leveling up. Um, they may have some foundational knowledge or on the job experience or an MBA, whatever, but with the rapidly changing world that we live and work in, um, this you know, really provided a, a great springboard for us to, to really try as an experiment. That's great, Th thanks, John. And uh, transitions kind of to my next question. We talk a lot on these chats and I, I talk a lot with, um, with other leaders from, from organizations around buy-in. Buy-in tends to be tricky with learning and development, development opportunities here. Uh, and I think you have a really great kind of buy-in story, right? So I'd love to hear a little bit about how you got buy-in from leadership. I know you serve in a leadership role yeah, yeah. at Bose, but it, it's tricky to get others in the C-suite and beyond to, to really buy into this sort of a project. So can yeah, you tell me is. a little bit about that. Yeah. Sure, happy to. I mean, um, you know, I think first and foremost, the, the buy-in was, was relatively simple. Obviously I'm a, an executive and I sit on a number of different cross-divisional committees and, and councils and stuff. Um, but first and foremost, you know, as a functional expert in, in sales and marketing and strategy and, and other things, you know, coming in with that endorsement uh, to the other parts of the organization that, hey, this is pretty good stuff. We need to pay attention to this. Um, that really helped uh, start the process. And then ultimately, we invited a few you know, selected people to, to start experimenting um, by taking a couple sprints. And then we, we decided to really make it kind of a grassroots effort um, to create more of a community of advocates uh, across the organization, different functions, different divisions. And uh, then it just has started to grow like wildfire uh, and people are, are super excited. Um, from the top and the bottom of the organization. So it's been a lot of fun. 
That's great. And so the, you know, it sounds like the leadership box is checked. I, I remember this, this point, it was kind of late 2020, the, the right leadership boxes were checked, but then we get to the, maybe, maybe the more challenging part here, which is getting employees, not only employees who serve on your team, but employees across the world to buy into this opportunity. Yeah, you know, uh, Colby, what was what was interesting is, you know, everybody's working from home around the world. They're working, you know, really, really hard under massive stress and tough conditions professionally and, and personally. So we were a little concerned that, you know, people didn't want to commit to yet another uh, set of activities. But, you know, because of the strong advocacy and the community that we kind of built up, um, it was actually much easier sell, if I could use that word, it didn't take much uh, to get people excited about it. You know, some people had heard about Scott Galloway, uh, but some people were just super interested in, in you know, using this to help um, grow their career and, and to help manage it. You know, we wanted to make it easy for employees to sign up and register. So we've, we've taken away a lot of the burden of that. Um, obviously, it's affordable. We wanted, you know, we love the, the community aspects that, that Section 4 is building out. And, you know, when you look at uh, the ability to network and meet people from around the world, it's spectacular. And the caliber of, of participants ranging from startups to mid, mid-sized companies, big companies, the diversity is, is, is great. And that's been, you know, uh, that's been a big benefit. And then you know, I've been very clear with people, you know, you're doing upskilling, uh, have a little fun, meet some people, you know, while you're doing your networking, be selfish with your, your personal development, use work time to do this. Uh, don't, don't let it slip to the evenings and weekends because you'll never catch up. Um, and then we said it, you know, if you choose to do the optional uh, final project, you know, do it on something you're passionate about or have an interest in. Don't do it on normal Bose type work. You deal with that every day. So, you know, we've tried to keep it open and flexible uh, for our employees. Well, it sounds like a great kind of organic growth opportunity for, for Bose and to think about, you know, as, and, I, and I know this because I've worked with you on this, but I know that you've been able to pull folks from various divisions, various functions, various offices around the world to buy into this culture around and kind of the culture and community within section four. Yeah. So in that regard, I'd love to think specific to cross-functional teams. So, you know, for, for the audience's context, when, when Bose brings a team on board with us and Bose has now brought teams on board for several sprints at this point, um, they're often cross-functional groups. These, you know, we, we have many teams who sprint with us. This is further context. Many teams sprint with us as simple functional teams. A marketing team from a company will take a, a sprint with us. But Bose has really worked exclusively with cross-functional teams. So John, I'd love if you could dig in a little bit on why, why cross-functional rather than functional teams here? And then who those, what, you know, who and what those teams uh, really look like. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe I'll start with uh, the who and what, Colby. Um, you know, and this this image that you used with with Adam Alter for the product sprint. This was a great example where we had people from advanced research and development. We had people from marketing. We had people from strategy. We had people from product planning, category management, um, and so, you know all across the company. And then the, one of the big reasons was to try to find some better common language and common frameworks to evaluate questions and strategic choices and those kind of things. Um, and, and it's proven to be super helpful. Uh, and again, I think the, um, the global nature of this has been been good because we've been able to get a lot of global involvement uh, of our employees. So um, we're we're excited about that. I think the um, it, it's been fun. I'll I'll give you an example too of just how like how we're using this. Uh, we're using a, a woman from our HR HR manager used some of the skills and frameworks that she learned in the brand sprint to help improve our employee value proposition. 
And, and so that was a, a great example of, of somebody from HR going to a brand sprint to upskill and then applying it to their functional role. Can you tell me a little bit, a, a little bit more about, uh, you know, that HR manager's experience who, you know, who was she also kind of interacting with from the Bose team? Um, and I, I suppose, I don't, you might not have the answer to this question, but you know, where did this nugget of, of I, an idea really come from within the sprint? Um, you know, it's, it's a good question. She, and I'm, I'm going to be fully transparent. She was a last minute substitute for a colleague that had some private issues. So she actually had no idea what she was getting into, but you know, we briefed her on, on the, even better, even yeah, better than exactly. <laughs> and, and so we briefed her on, you know, kind of the whole learning concept and, uh, she, she really embraced it. And through the dialogue that I had with her, this is when we started to explore how to apply the different frameworks uh, and, and lessons that you're learning, the case studies to specific um, business issues. So in her case, she did apply it on something Bose related, but I would say 60 to 70% of our employees that have participated have applied it to other areas outside of Bose. Awesome. Excellent. So, so that brings me to, to the nuts and bolts. And, and I love this piece in our, in our conversations. You know, most, for context, most folks on the call today uh, have taken a sprint with us before. Um, they have, you know, some, some of the folks on the call today have taken a sprint with their teams. Many haven't. And there are also a few folks who, who join us who have never taken a Section 4 sprint before. Um, so for those who have taken a sprint, these, these, uh, this image and these pieces will be very familiar to you. Um, but specific to you, John, and to Bose, I'd love to hear a bit about how you leverage the various uh, sprint, um, sprint components for your team and your kind of cross-functional and global team specifically. You know, I think uh, I love the little um, visual image to the left, you know, kind of working from bottom to the top, the, the, the videos, the, the modules, so well done. The content is, is super rich, uh, bite size. You know, I, I constantly get feedback from people. Oh, we love the snackable bite size content. It's so well done. It's so rich in its content and we go back and we watch a video three times, five times. So the videos are great because they are self-directed. The, you know, the community, um, I kind of mentioned earlier, so I won't, I won't re repeat that. The live stream classes uh, with Scott, uh, you know, that's, that's worth the price of admission for the Scott Galloway Theater. Um, Adam Alter has been awesome. Uh, I think that product sprint is going to get even better, and and so that's good. the The workbook uh, is is gaining a lot of uh, positive feedback. I haven't used the workbook, um, but uh, that's been good. Slack, uh, you know, you'll you'll see some feedback there. There's there's some room for improvement there, um, but it is a great tool if you stick with it. And then the final project has been has been fun. Uh, for a lot of people to do so all in all quick. and then I, I'd, I'd love John if you could add to about um, your onboarding experience with with within section four and you know this is something as we know is you know the the sprint metrics reporting and then the onboarding yeah. is slightly different than what you might get as an individual so yeah tell I mean, us a bit about that piece yeah. the onboarding um, you know that that we've had with with section four has been great whether it's Colby or uh, Keelan and other um, members of the Section 4 team, you guys are high touch and, and you deliver a great premium brand experience and you really help get people prepared uh, for the experience that they're going to go through. We've actually supplemented it on our own a little bit, getting, uh, you know, quick 15 minute discussions with people that have never been. So we'll do a check-in before we start and we'll, then we'll do some feedback and discussion after a sprint gets done. So we're kind of doing it in collaboration with, with what you guys are doing, but um, you know, nothing but kudos for the, the high level of support from section four. Great. 
So gonna gonna double down a bit and have you dig, dig in deeper on the, the global team. I think this is, this is, as I've said to you before, John, this is something that really sets the Bose group apart. You are truly around the world, uh, which has obviously some logistical implications within a sprint and a team sprint, um, but you've managed that really well. Um, so I'd love for you to dig in a little bit on that. Yeah, I mean, we were excited um, to, to provide the opportunity for, for people from all over the world to get, again, that foundational uh, learning as well as upskilling. We've had people from Germany, France, Netherlands, um, uh, Japan, China, uh, North America, obviously, uh, you know, so we've, we've six, eight different countries, uh, all the different um, uh, functions. And, you know, I, I think one of the things that's been super positive as well is, you know, when you go to a sprint, you, you watch it, then you watch the live classes and stuff, you just become energized. And, and it's been really great for people that have been struggling with working from home and COVID and overload and stuff. This, this has been a massive improvement uh, in people's mental models and mindsets and you know, I think the other thing is I, I hear nothing but great feedback about the networking opportunities and some of the social things that you guys are starting to add in. That's been a huge hit. Um, so, you know, I think it's it's been amazing, Colby, in the sense that we've, we've really only been doing this for about six months. Um, but man, the progress that we've made and and how people have used it has been has really been helpful and impressive. So the, the big question, John, that, that, I, that we always finish with, and, and frankly, I think this is why people show up, um, you, you know, what so far, I know this is maybe a tricky question, but so far, where, is the, where have you seen the ROI specific to Bose? You know, where, where, have, um, where has this led your team towards kind of future success and immediate success in 2021? You know, I think... Um it's, it's, it's really helped, um, you know, you, you've, you've highlighted a couple of things based on some dialogue that we've had, but, you know, upskilling and leveling up to be better professionals. Um, I think if I was to boil it down into like three, like really big takeaways for, you know, what we've gained is, you know, we, we look at these sprints and then look at, okay, the time to application, meaning how fast can you apply what you've learned, it's pretty much immediate and it's diverse. So that time to application is, is immediate and fast. When we look at the degree of impact that what we're learning and our employees are learning, you know, is it helping them make good choices or better decisions? And I'd say, yes, absolutely. So that, that ability to have a high impact uh, result that's been that's been a real positive and then you know lastly the sprint is it's an incredibly good value in terms of what you get for what you're paying and uh, so that's that's been you know probably the three big takeaways that we've gotten uh, as as employees but also for the company and we're excited to you know con continue to really scale this up uh, as we finish out uh, the next three to six months, uh, we're, we have a lot of big plans to scale this up even more across the enterprise. We're looking to do a couple different things, maybe as product, as teams. Um, and then obviously we're looking at the different um, learning uh, approaches and modules, you know, whether we're paying per, uh, per course for, you know, maybe a new person or whether we go to a subscription, the membership type subscription. Uh, these, are, these are ways that uh, we're trying to use to help stimulate constant learning in this dynamic world that we live in. That's great. Uh, I love that answer, obviously. And I think, you know, listen, it's, it's um, to those in the audience, it's important. Um, you know, John's highlighted some of those immediate uh, re returns he's seen come back, shifting language, shifting dialogue, elevating, you know, 
various folks across the world who, who you know, work with, work with, work with Bose Corp. But he's also highlighting that, that uh, there, there will likely be a more macro return after some time, after he continues and Bose broadly continues executing on this plan to, to grow and to upskill more folks and to bring more teams on board and, and to get a little bit more you know, deeply strategic on, on who is doing what and when and why. Um, so the great news, of course, is that so far so good. Um, it's been a great few months with Bose, and and it sounds like we have you know many months and years ahead where this is going to continue to grow. Um, so immediate ROI, that's what we like to promise. We talk about that all the time. We feel as though Section Four sprints, of course, create a lot of action that we're supposed to get your wheels spinning so you leave at an accelerated pace. Uh, but with teams specifically, there's also this accountability, right? John knows that his team is going to get through this piece. Um, so it's obviously exciting for you. It's exciting for other leaders like you at the organization. Um, so we're excited to keep partnering with you. Anyway, enough of me, more of John. Uh, a couple of questions have popped in the Q&A, John. I'll, um, I'll start with this one. This, this is from Jeremy. Um, is there a particular sprint that you've taken so far that's resonated uh, the most, I suppose, with your team? You know, um, I might be biased, but uh, I've taken all three. So the brand, the strategy, and the product sprints. I'm actually taking the, the brand new platforming sprint next week. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, I think the brand sprint is probably the one that's resonated the strongest mm -hmm. so far uh, with many of our employees. Um, it's it's Scott's real sweet spot uh, as a as a as a professor and as a leader as a as the business uh, you know superstar that he is. So that's probably one that's resonated uh, really really well. Um, they've all gotten super high and positive feedbacks from our employees. I think the, you know, the product sprint um, is a new sprint. I think they've only run one or two cohorts so far, uh, but I think there's a lot of potential and there's some really good frameworks uh, and approaches that Adam Alter presented that are really helping our product and category people. So again they're all good but um i might be a, a we might be a little bit biased towards um brand and what's interesting is most people at bose actually have pretty limited foundational knowledge of brand management so this has been a, a big benefit to get people more people especially non-business and marketing people get them some some foundational fundamentals around brand has been super helpful Great, great, great question. Another another excellent question came in through the chat, John. Um, this is this is doubling down, I think, on our last question. Are there are there some concrete examples of how the sprints have changed how Bose has looked at, you know, work or changed how they act at work? Are there any sort of really rooted specifics? You know, I think. Um, as it relates to um, maybe one, some of the frameworks that are introduced in the different classes. Um, Scott's got a framework uh, called the three hurdles model. And uh, we're using that three hurdles model in discussions and decision-making forums around um, products and brands pretty extensively right now. Um, and there's other, other frameworks that, that in the various sprints that we're starting to incorporate in our dialogue. Um, I think those are helping. I think the other thing that's helped, um, we use the clock model uh, to do some lessons learned. So the clock model is really a purchase funnel, but in, in, in the shape of a clock. And we've used that a little bit to diagnose some, uh, some challenges that we face and some decisions that have been made in the past. And by using that clock model with everybody at the same table, you can come to some quicker conclusions that everybody understands. Um, so those are probably two quick examples. That's great. Uh, those are great examples, John. And to, to confirm, those are two um, great examples from our brand sprint. Uh, we last ran, ran the, the brand sprint and had folks from Bose join us uh, last month. 
uh, sounds like pretty pretty quick action to me if we're bringing those some of those concepts back to you know to internal discussions yeah uh, i think the so other thing great. yeah i think the other thing maybe colby is is on the strategy sprint um there's a lot of uh great um great frameworks in in that sprint uh around you know uh, the uh I just lost my my train of thought here on the you know the rundles and bundles and and then Scott's in, infatuation with that but we're we're using the T algorithm which is a is a great framework um, to help uh, some of our future product designs and business model designs so that's probably another great example where it's getting immediate application you know time to application. And helping make better decisions is what we're what we're really striving for. That's great. That final piece, John, is that's that's the that's the good stuff, right? The quick time to action. Yep. That quick sort of the nugget of information, whether it's brand sprint way, really in any of our sprints, we're crafting experiences where the language is so palpable for our our community that you know you begin if you have a team in this experience they begin using the jargon back and forth with each other they're bringing it to the you know to leadership and making presentations within a new framework um, so thanks so much for highlighting that uh, i'm aware that we've gone a little bit over time um, there are a, a couple more questions that um, i will let's let's do one quickly we'll do one quickly john um, if folks if folks need to go uh, apologies for running a little over but um, let's see, this is a good one. Uh, are there any methods, John, technologies or tools that you have adopted in addition to these ideas from your experience with section four? Um, for example, he uses an example here, the use of Slack, using short videos to communicate with one another, um, formalizing some models and using directed exercises, et cetera. Have you stolen, I suppose, from your experience to bring a, you know, a new, work methodology back to um, back to Bose? Uh, it's a great question. And the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> I would say more so um, the concept, you know, video for sure, uh, and high quality video um, in more micro type uh, learning or micro do doses. Uh, we're starting to use that even more. I'm sure everybody has had to adopt that to, to deal with COVID. Um, definitely haven't bought into the Slack tool yet. So uh, that, 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 that's not, uh, not yet uh, being used. Um, but you we're know, getting some of your personal preferences here. I, 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 li I like the, the honesty. Uh, and I think, I think the audience will respond well to that too. I mean, I, I actually can, you know, Slack is a pretty interesting tool. It's just another tool. If you're not using it in your day-to-day -day life that just, it takes some time getting, getting used to it is, it is a good approach given the size of the audience. Um, but I, I think, um, you know, we're, I'd say the big thing has been video and, and the, the use of video to, to teach in, in more micro-based uh, uh, dosages. Yeah, I, re I really, really like that point. Slack, Slack aside, right? I think less is more when it comes to these interactions, right? And we, we've talked about this around this session. Yeah. Uh, this likely could have been a 60 to 90 minute talk. Um, if I were doing, if we were doing this at, you know, in, in New York City at Section 4 or, or at Bose Corp, we'd be likely booking an hour plus of time. But doing this in micro doses and more often is actually more impactful and more effective. Um, and with the Slack, you know, to close the loop on the Slack piece, I suppose it's, you know, it, it is certainly not for everybody. It's a medium that uh, you can turn on and off. Uh, and, and that's, for some people in the sprints, they love to be on Slack really throughout the day, yeah. frankly. For others, it's just a, a little bite-sized piece every couple of days. Exactly. Um, and that's that's actually what, you know, to give the inside scoop there, that's really what we're planning for. Mm -hmm. We expect and, and actually want folks to be in and out casually to engage in that extra dialogue if they need to dig in more deeply to a framework. Yep. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you so much, John. This was this was outstanding. Uh, going over time, I think, is a good problem to have. So 
clearly the, the thoughts and, and conversation that you've brought today has resonated with folks. Um, to those on the call who've stuck around, thank you so much for being here. Um, again, if, if you're, you're interested in, in bringing a team on board with Section 4, uh, you know, reach out to myself uh, or send you know, teams at section4.com a quick note. Um, but I'd also welcome you to join us for future conversations. And John, we hope to have you back maybe in six months or so once we've scaled this thing up and uh, have you give another, another recap. Um, Absolutely. I enjoyed it. And uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for taking some precious time out of their day to join us. Uh, as I said before, if you have further questions or you want to reach out directly, just hit me up on LinkedIn or, uh, you know, uh, my, uh, my, my email uh, at Bose is john underscore Maloney at Bose.com. So feel free to reach out. Um, happy to happy to answer any questions. Awesome. Thank you all. See you all next right. time. Take care. Thanks. Stay safe.